I miss Breath of the Wild. I've heard others echo this sentiment lately, and I've found myself returning to the game in recent months. But why? People have said that Breath of the Wild walked so that Tears of the Kingdom could run. And I tend to agree. On paper, Tears of the Kingdom seems to be superior in nearly every aspect. It offers a much larger open world, an incredible storyline, and more creative freedom than any game in Zelda history. So why is it that we yearn for this more simple and limited game? Today I'd like to do a deep dive into why I miss Breath of the Wild. Because of the nature of Breath of the Wild, you find yourself traveling most of the game on foot. There's plenty of horses to ride, but they're limited by the rough terrain. While this is a much slower way of transportation than Tears of the Kingdom's vehicles, it does give you plenty of time to stop and smell the roses. And this is where one of Breath of the Wild's biggest strengths comes into play. Atmosphere. Breath of the Wild has one of the most peaceful and serene environments I've seen in any open world game. You'll often find long stretches of land with no people or enemies, but just the simple sounds of nature. And then on the other hand, we have Zonai devices in Tears of the Kingdom that do give us incredible creative freedom, but also encourage us to create a chaotic and destructive environment. Let's contrast these for a moment. This is a generalization, of course. Breath of the Wild can be quite chaotic at times. Especially if you embrace it by leading one mini-boss to another and have them fight to the death. Or ride a bear onto the top of a stone talus while wearing a Santa Claus outfit. And yes, these are the type of things I used to do in Breath of the Wild before Tears of the Kingdom released. But there has to be another reason why we miss this iconic game so much. While most assets carried over from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom, there's still a few things unique to Breath of the Wild. Specifically, anything Sheikah. The Sheikah tribe had a huge influence on the world of Breath of the Wild. These ranged from things like the design of shrines and the divine beasts, to even small details like the ancient armor set and my favorite weapon, the ancient blade saw. And of course, you can't forget the most iconic enemy in all of Breath of the Wild, the Guardian. Nobody who's played Breath of the Wild will be able to forget the first time one of their lasers locked onto you and you just ran for your life. Guardians are unique enemies because they have multiple weak spots. You could target their eye or the blue spot on their underside, but one of the best ways to take them down is to close the gap and take out their legs. Not only does this stun the Guardian, but it also gives you extra ancient parts. Guardians were such a fun and versatile enemy to fight, and actually gave players a reason to learn parrying so that they could reflect their lasers. I'm glad that Guardians stayed behind in Breath of the Wild, because it's one of the main ways you can differentiate between the two games. Another thing I was so happy to return to when I picked up Breath of the Wild again was the old abilities. Cryonis makes traversing water enjoyable, and even though there's alternatives in Tears of the Kingdom, like ice fruits or making a boat, it's just not the same. 
Remote bombs were great for things like fishing or knocking enemies far away from you. And the fact that you could choose when to detonate them allowed for some really cool setups and experimentation. And let's not forget about the most beloved of all champion abilities, Rivali's Gale. This ability creates a huge gust of wind that lifts you high up into the air. There's ways that you can replicate the same effect in Tears of the Kingdom, of course, like adding fire and pine cones together or using a rocket shield. But all of those methods require a setup each and every time you want to get some vertical height. In Breath of the Wild, though, it's an effortless movement option that opens up so many new opportunities once you attain it. Stasis is also a source of endless fun in this game. By freezing an object in time and then hitting it repeatedly to build momentum, you can launch objects super far. This can be used for a surprise attack on enemies at a distance, or climb aboard the object yourself and soar through the skies. I guess the only ability I don't really miss is Magnesis, since Ultra Hand is basically just Magnesis on steroids. Not only can you grab any object you want with Ultra Hand, but you can glue them together in an endless number of combinations. It's this ability that makes Tears of the Kingdom truly one of the best games I've ever played. But there's still one area in which Breath of the Wild is vastly superior to Tears of the Kingdom. Glitches. Breath of the Wild has some of the most fun and ridiculous glitches of any game I've ever played. And they give you something else to master in the post-game to keep it feeling fresh. You see, at release, Tears of the Kingdom had some fantastically fun glitches. But unlike Breath of the Wild, Nintendo patched these out as soon as they were discovered. And for someone like me who didn't have auto-updates turned off, these glitches are forever lost. But thankfully, Breath of the Wild's glitches are still intact and better than ever. You probably saw it earlier in the video, but I was using the infinite active hitbox glitch that you can activate while riding a horse. It works nearly the same as the infinite sword glitch in Ocarina of Time, making it so that your weapon is striking constantly, not just when you swing it. And it makes elemental weapons look super cool. Then there's some lesser known glitches, such as the skew bounce. As you can see, the roof to the die shop is much too high for Link to jump up to. But by storing a certain shield surfing skew, and then shield surfing and unequipping your shield, you can bounce up super high. You can use this to get up to high places, or to enter bullet time from flat ground while in battle. And you never know when something crazy might happen. Helicopter, helicopter. My favorite glitch to use in combat is called Thunderclap Rush. Basically what it does is forces a flurry rush on an enemy even when you haven't dodged any of their attacks. It's both stylish and allows you to rack up damage like crazy. It requires bullet time to activate, but if you combine it with another glitch called Shield Block Reset, you can get bullet time straight from flat ground into a Thunderclap Rush. The shield block reset requires you to block a bomb with your shield and then do a backflip to get a double jump within just a few frames of the attack hitting your shield. It's pretty precise, but the thunderclap rush itself is really easy to pull off once you get bullet time. I believe shield block resets actually still exist in Tears of the Kingdom, but sadly thunderclap rush has been patched out. Thankfully, you can still use it to style on enemies to your heart's content while playing Breath of the Wild and make some crazy cool combat montages fighting some lionels. The glitch you might be most familiar with from Breath of the Wild is Wind Bombs. This involved Link jumping forward and then entering bullet time and placing both the circular and the square bomb behind him. When the first bomb is detonated, it blasts the second bomb into Link, sending him flying across the map at an incredible speed. Here's me combining three glitches into one. I'm using the infinite active hitbox glitch for the fire effect, an arrow smuggle glitch to get the ancient arrow effect, and finally the horse sliding glitch to fly off of my horse at an incredible speed and take out this guardian. These are the kind of beautiful things you can do in Breath of the Wild. But even with all of these great glitches, there's one glitch to rule them all. Bullet time bounce. You could call this the glitch with a thousand uses, but you probably know it from speedruns where players will fly all the way across the map in one go to the castle. You travel so fast, in fact, that the game often stutters as it struggles to load in all of the assets. But for the sake of time after this clip, I'm going to cut out all of the stutters. 
Just know that Link is flying across the map so fast that the game can't even handle it. And you thought travel by hover bike was quick. I mean, honestly, anything can happen when you do this glitch. Helicopter, helicopter. It involves shield jumping onto the back of a frozen enemy and entering bullet time right before you make contact. From there, any number of things could happen like spinning out or being able to shield surf backwards. While this works on most enemies in the game, my favorite one to use it on is Lizalfos because they send you flying horizontally really, really far. You might even clip into an object and get stuck inside of there. In most cases, this is not too useful for anything, but it is really funny. Or if you get really lucky, you might clip through the entire map altogether. Things underneath Hyrule look really weird and janky, but it is super interesting to see what it looks like down here. But even with all these possibilities, there's one thing I like to do with bullet time bounce more than anything else. Just like how a flat rock that's thrown with enough speed and the right technique can skip across water, Link can actually skip across land before he takes damage. I find that this occurs most often when I land at a higher elevation than the location of the enemy was that I jumped off of. This is also much more likely to occur if you're using a Lizalfos because of the incredible horizontal momentum. In these examples, Link is getting one single skip before he takes damage. When I started out, this was the best that I could do, and my results were often inconsistent. But I wondered if it was possible to get more than one skip. One thing I did find easy to do in the beginning at these extreme speeds was to deflect off of walls when I hit them. But these occur anytime you hit a steep wall. They don't really take any effort, so I didn't count those as skips. But after a while of practicing, I found out that it actually was possible to get two skips off of a single jump. Which led me to wonder what was the maximum amount of skips that I could get with this glitch. And so my link skipping journey began. And let me tell you, some absolutely wild things happened during this.
Four was a very respectable number, but I knew I could push it even further. I wasn't going to be satisfied until I got at least six skips. And randomly after this last round of skips, I tried shield surfing onto a Yiga for some reason, and this happened. I didn't even know that was possible. Currently, six is my record, but I suspect you could get more if you had a really perfect run. So, is Breath of the Wild better than Tears of the Kingdom? Overall, I think I still like Tears of the Kingdom more. It offers so much freedom and creativity with its building mechanics. But I hope that if you took anything away from this video, it's that there are still plenty of reasons to go back and enjoy Breath of the Wild. I usually don't do video essay style videos, so let me know if you like this or if I'm just a scrub and should stick to tutorials for the rest of my life. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Thanks for watching guys. Helicopter, helicopter.